Throughout our lives, we've experienced the unexplainable, from bright apparitions to dark entities, changing our perspectives on the afterlife. Now we seek answers and intend to capture evidence of paranormal existence. These are our paranormal experiences. Hey everyone, I'm Stan from TPE and today I'm here to discuss some of the paranormal gear we use during investigations. Over the past year or so through our episodes, people have asked what's the gear you're using and instead of talking about it within those particular episodes, we've decided to actually make a video about it, so here we are. Now before we start talking about the particular bits of gear that we use during investigations, I'd like to talk about the gear itself and everything we use. The gear we use doesn't guarantee that we're going to capture or detect ghosts. There's nothing that says it's going to definitely do this. It's it's all about using the equipment appropriately and experimenting with it. It's um, all the gear we have. It's controversial. It's it's up to criticism and debate because it's not. We don't know what we're looking for basically, and that's the reason we're looking. Otherwise, we'd be searching for new the answers. I was in a workshop once, and this guy I was talking to was like leading the workshop. Says you know well, this this particular K2 device or EMF meter. They say it picks up on certain energies but how do they know what they're looking for because we don't know what the energy is it's like how we how do we design particular bits of gear if we don't know what we're looking for and that's and that but that sort of I've always kept that in mind and I think we should keep that in mind while talking about these pieces of equipment and of course I forgot to wear the shirt during the entire thing but that's okay we're gonna go ahead with it anyway so we're going to start off with a DVR, so start off with some more basic stuff and work our way up. A DVR stands for Digital Voice Recorder. Its name alone is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll quickly go over what it does and its role within a paranormal investigation. Basically, the DVR has a sensitive mic that will record the surrounding atmosphere. May it be your own voice or something paranormal. Depending on what quality the mic is, the DVR can be sensitive enough to record unheard noises or capture EVPs. Now what are EVPs you might ask? Well, EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomena and they can be captured not only while using DVRs but also while using cameras and other devices that capture audio. Now during investigations we use DVRs in short bursts that range from about a minute or two in length before playing it back for an instant sort of review. This allows us to communicate more effectively if the spirits are trying to talk to us through the DVR. We've also used the DVR for experiments such as leaving the DVR next to Boo Buddy, which is a sort of a pre-programmed bear that asks questions every now and then. We tend not to use the DVRs for huge lengths of time simply because the review process can be very cumbersome. However, every team and individual has their preferred methods of investigation. Dowsing rods. Dowsing rods are made out of solid metal copper with an assortment of beads on the handles. This piece of equipment was originally used for finding water and other minerals. However, we use them to communicate with spirits and other entities. The way to use dowsing rods can differ from team to team, but generally the user holds the rods in a neutral position, making sure to keep them relatively still, and only holding the rods by the beads. Next, you ask a yes or no question. Spirits can communicate by moving the rods in or out for a yes or no answer. You could also ask where they are in the room, or even ask where they want you to go. We find that the rods are great for skeptics, as they can't be electronically programmed or anything like that beforehand. Although some people may explain that you could be unconsciously moving the rods for answers. This is called the audio motor effect. The K2. The K2 is but one of many forms of EMF meters. EMF stands for electromagnetic field. Spirits and entities are said to give off electromagnetic fields, leading to abnormal fluctuations. When using this device on investigations, you can ask spirits to light up your device once for yes or twice for no, and then proceed with a question or even simply have the spirit or entity interact with a K2 randomly. 
When using the EMF, it's important to conduct a EMF sweep of the location prior to investigations. This will help determine if there are any possible forms of electrical contamination. The EMF meter can give off false positives if there's any electrical or battery operated sources nearby. And even mobile phones can set off the device, but you can either turn them off or switch the phone to flight mode. The millimeter. The millimeter combines two important aspects into its design. It can read both temperature and EMF. It's very handy to have access to both while investigating as spirits are known for manipulating both temperature and EMF. It's also great because it means less gear to haul around during investigations. Because the millimeter has two functions that run simultaneously, this provides more information and data, and the more data we have and collect, the higher chance we begin to pinpoint and predict spiritual manifestations through documenting changes in the surrounding atmosphere. The millimeter will give you an exact reading compared to other basic EMFs, which will give you only an estimate. Similar to other EMF meters, the millimeter can give off false positives, so make sure you do pre-sweeps and find any sources of contamination. The EM pump. EM pumps produce electromagnetic fields for spirits to feed from and therefore be more able to communicate. This electromagnetic field is produced by a motor propelling a magnet at high speeds going around and around, creating a magnetic field. During an investigation, we use EM pumps right before doing EVP sessions or any other form of photography or filming. We don't recommend using the EM pump while investigating in the nearby vicinity as it may interrupt with your equipment, especially EMF meters, and it could cause other technical malfunctions. On the plus side, it's great to sacrifice EM pump's battery supply to the spirits as they may end up leaving your other gear alone. The REM pod. The REM pod is similar to the EM pump as it emits its own magnetic field through its telescopic antenna. Any object or possible spirit that breaks this field will set off some form of alarm system, either through a fantastic light show or loud noises. The REM pod we possess is a basic version and only emits the magnetic field. However, other REM pods that we have used in the past have a few implemented features, including temperature readings that emit certain tones for an increase or decrease in temperature. This is accompanied by flashing LED lights, red for warm, blue for cold. REM pods are great for hallways, doorways, or next to trigger objects. However, we do need to be careful as the REM pod can give off false positives if you or your team uses walkie-talkies. The Connect Camera the Kinect camera is a device that uses the infrared tracking system to map in rough skeletal figures. We prefer to use this device in open areas such as hallways or large open rooms. Depending on which Kinect camera you have in its software, the Kinect has a chance to incorrectly map in inanimate objects as skeletal figures, such as chairs, pot plants and stools. Therefore, we always use other pieces of equipment alongside the Kinect camera in order to assist the validation and confirm that the Kinect is indeed capturing something paranormal. The Spirit Box The Spirit Box sweeps at a fast rate through radio stations, both FM and AM, creating white noise. The white noise gives some spirits and entities the energy to speak through. Normally during Spirit Box sessions, entire words such as yes or no could be called strange, simply because the sweep rate between radio stations does not allow entire words to come through. The team, for example, has the Spirit Box set to a 150 millisecond sweep rate, which only produces inaudible words and white noise. You can purchase a Faraday cage to stop the spirit box from receiving radio stations completely, but you could alternatively not extend the spirit box antenna, reducing radio interference. We hope you enjoyed our brief descriptions on some of the gear we are using during investigation. If you liked the episode, feel free to subscribe to the channel as it helps us produce more paranormal content for you. So, see you next time for some more paranormal experiences.